Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Andrew Hodson, and I'm here tonight with my uh, daughter, Emily, who's our winemaker at Veritas Winery. This is our fifth virtual wine tasting. Can't believe things have gone so quickly. Um, we really are enjoying ourselves with, with, with these virtual tastings. Tonight, we're featuring a wine that we're particularly proud of. Um, I, I said to Emily this evening, this is a wine, this is the wine of this decade. Um, and what I mean by that is that uh, we've only made one Cabernet Franc Reserve uh, since 2007, actually. Um, and, um, and, and we need to let you know how great this wine is. I mean, how what's special it, it is yeah, to and us. I want to share it with, with you. So, Emily, would you like to just let start us know off. what's happening at Veritas? Sure. So I, I wanted to start off by just saying we've had a wonderful opening week. It's been great to have you all back have um, parties and families on the premise and um, so many smiling faces and as far as we can tell um, from from your feedback and from what we see um, it's been a very enjoyable experience um, we are doing reservation pods um, which in which you have your own space with a tent uh, a table and a server which has been a special experience especially you know, as we've all been kind of cooped up inside, it's nice to get outside, but also feel safe. Um, and then because it's been going so well, we've also opened our lawn space for people to um, enjoy safely with six foot distancing and parties of less than 10. Um, so I guess where I started was, is I'm very thankful to have you all back and um, we look forward to seeing you all this weekend as well. I can't agree with Emily more, uh, particularly with the, the safety factor. Uh, I think the, the feedback that I've liked the most is that people have felt secure here. And um, that's one of the things that George and all of us have worked very hard to ensure people's feeling of safety. So let's talk about Cabernet Franc. Cabernet Franc is the most planted red grape in Virginia. Uh, it's one of Chardonnay. Oh, red grape. Red grape, oh yes, red yes grape. sorry. Most planted red grape mm -hmm. in Virginia. And um, a grape that I have come to love in the 20 years that we've been growing it. Um, I, I like to say that the, the biggest problem with Cabernet Franc is that it's called Cabernet Franc. And many people will take a taste of Cabernet Franc and say, that's not a Cabernet. Um, no, it's not a Cabernet Sauvignon, it's a Cabernet Franc. And the grapes are very Two, different. Yes, completely different beasts entirely. Right, and Cabernet Sauvignon is, you know, seen as the uh, the king of red grapes, uh, the the wine that is made from that wine that makes the Chateau uh, first growth wines is a Cabernet Sauvignon. It's a thick skin grape. It has high acid. It's got a lot of pigment, and it has flavors of predominantly black fruit with lots of uh, nuances of uh, bell pepper and, and, uh, and oak influences that, that Cabernet Sauvignon particularly likes. It likes to be aged in oak. But then Cabernet Franc. Is very different. Yes. It's a thinner skin grape. Uh, it has a, uh, has a less tannic uh, capacity. It's a lower in, in the pigment. Uh, and and the so therefore very elegant. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, and the, the fruit spectrum, rather than being black fruit, is much more red fruit with you know, nuances of plum, uh, mushroom. Uh, uh, the French love to talk about um, wild strawberries. The wild strawberry is the, is the, the flavor of a Cabernet Franc. And um, we, we would particularly love our Cabernet Franc. Um, and I've got to like it more and more as we've been growing it in Virginia, as I said. So Emily, um, 2017, what was it about the growing year? What was it about that vintage that enabled you to make such an outstanding wine as this? Sure, so definitely mm. the vintage was the driving factor. Um, one thing that um, sort of outlines this wine is that our Cabernet Franc Reserve um, in, in, our, in our house, in our winery, it, the rule is that it's 100% Cabernet Franc. So the grape has to speak for itself and be a fully developed wine. And what I mean by that is it's got to have the fruit, it's got to have the 
got to have the finish without blending in any other grapes from the vintage. So that's the, that's the first thing that defines Cabernet Franc Reserve. Um, so what the vintage did, and as my dad said earlier, the last time we made this wine was 2007, so 10 years ago. And I can promise you that's not for a lack of trying on my part. Um, mm -hmm. And that was also not a lack of, of vintage, but in 2017, um, it was a vintage for Cabernet Franc. Um, we had some beautiful, we had a long vintage, so the ripening, Process. the length of the ripening was, was very long. We also had smaller berry size, um, so we had less flesh within the berry, so great skin, great tannins. Um, hence more concentrated. Hence more concentrated. Um, so we got to hang the Cabernet Franc a little bit longer and build that tannic structure on the vine very naturally. So that's how um, 2017 got to be highlighted as the, the next Cap Franc Reserve vintage. The other thing I'd like to highlight is that this is, for those, for those lucky ones of you out there that have managed to acquire this wine, this is, was actually a pre-release for us. So this uh, wine, this point, wine isn't point. readily available on the market. And I think, Becca, it's available next week as well. For yes. anybody that's watching and that uh, we've piqued your interest, um, we've done a pre-release on this wine. Um, we're going to hold on to it just for a little more bottle aging before we release it. Um, because our, our production level on this was about 290 cases. So it's a, a pretty good production size, but mm. um, you guys are pretty good at buying wine, so it won't, it won't last long. But basically, 2017, uh, for me, as a winemaker, was a Cabernet Franc year. Um, so I was excited to try and put the reserve together and it came together very easily. Yeah, I, I like to think that the less you have to do to a wine, Emily, the better is the quality. And uh, you know, a good wine and a good vintage um, almost makes itself. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things I've always been a bit of a problem for me is the fact that the Cabernet Franc, uh, by some people's estimate, lacks the mid palate. Mid palate. And the mid palate weight is one of the reasons that we often have to blend in a Merlot mm -hmm. or a Petit um, Verdot mm -hmm. to, to, to just fill up that mid palate. Sure. And, um, uh, and some people refer to it as a donut wine, a, a wine with a hole in the middle. But this wine was so good that Emily was able to realize, and having realized the quality of the wine, Emily, tell us what you did to, to actually bring out the, 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 the the qualities of the wine. So I just realized I forgot my notes there across uh, the tasting room. Um, but even to the vineyard level, I could see a beautiful balance on the Cabernet Franc. I could see the color was more intense than usual, and um, I could see the ripening curve. So when we're ripening Cab Franc, um, we're checking sugar, we're checking acids, and I could see oh, here, I, I have some secret notes coming in. Here we go. Um, uh, so, and I'll show this in just a second. So as soon as I realized that it was a Cab Franc year, that Cab Franc was the star. And one of the wonderful things about Virginia is that every vintage, every year is just slightly different. So for example, in 2010, when it was really hot and dry, our Merlot in um, clay soils was the star. Mm -hmm. And in 2017, for us, Cab Franc was the star. So I already had some um, hints. Clues. Clues. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I started to put together a barrel order. And anytime you order barrels, um, not only do you order a cooper, and the cooper is the maker of the barrel, so you, I have certain coopers that are my favorite. But then when you go to the cooper, you can order um, a tight grain, a loose grain, um, or you can order a medium toast or a heavy toast. Um, you can have the heads of the barrels, which are the, the circles on the ends of the barrels, a different toast than the rest of the barrel. Um, so what I did was actually put together um, a specific Cab Franc barrel. What I want in a barrel for Cab Franc is to um, respect the fruit, because the fruit is a lot of the quality of this wine and the freshness, we want it to be fresh. Um, but also, as you said, to kind of fill in the middle. So the oak is actually what's filling in the middle and building some, some pallet weight, right? Uh, and the middle is, um, so when you, when you put the wine in your mouth, that's the beginning. 
and so you, you perceive that. And then the middle is kind of as you're swallowing the wine. And then the finish is all the tastes that you can appreciate after the wine is already swallowed. So the mid palate is kind of the feel of the wine. Um, so when I ordered the barrels, I really specifically looked at this curve, which kind of shows you, you know, as you go up, that's the temperature. So I wanted a good temperature, some good warmth, but I also wanted a length to that warmth. And what that does is soften out the tannins um, and not make them toasty tannins or vanilla tannins or chocolate tannins. Um, just really soften out those tannins and build in the wine, but respect the Cab Franc, which is um, one of our favorite grapes um, to enjoy and to, to oh, evaluate. Certainly, certainly. Mm -hmm. But another thing, Emily, um, I believe you used a lot of French oak. Yes. Uh, and a lot of new French oak. Yes, 60% which, which, which is astounding. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a very big investment in any wine, mm -hmm. to have 60% new French barrels mm -hmm. to, to make the wine. And it, it goes to your skill in being able to understand the complexities of, of you know, toasting the barrel. And, and also not over-oaking a wine, because you could, right. Lose, right. You, you could lose the character of the Cab Franc 100% if you went into a, a medium plus or a heavy toast barrel that isn't respectful. Um, so, uh, to, should we pour the wine a little bit so yes, we can let's start do that. talking about it? What I, I'd like to say is that you know, whenever there's a, you have a, a good wine, a, a good wine has to have certain basic qualities. And I, I honestly think that this Cabernet Franc Reserve demonstrates all the great qualities that a good wine has. It has to have balance, it has to have intensity, complexity and a long complex finish and this wine exemplifies uh, what a good wine um, is and why you should know it is a good wine so let's start off by uh, tasting shall we sure and actually just a a as you swirl your wine um, I just wanted to point out because I think it's it's fun for anybody that's visited um, this Cabernet Franc as I said earlier is a hundred percent Cabernet Franc the vineyards that it's sourced from are the vineyard directly behind us. And if I could take the, if I could take the, the camera out and show you, it's it's basically behind us. So it's the Schaefer Field Cab Franc. Um, and then for those of you that have driven in, as you're driving into the winery, if you look up the vineyard to your left, you see a vineyard. But if you keep looking up even higher at the crest of the hill, uh, there's a vineyard that we call Hayes Branch. My uncle calls it Emily's. Emily's, Emily's yes. Um, uh, so the vineyard right up at the top of the hill, and then there's also um, Andrews Cliff yes. Cab Franc. So yes. that's three, um, three, blocks. three blocks of Cabernet Franc on this property, and they each bring different aspects to this wine. Schaefer Field, which is right behind me, which was named after one of my my cellar master for many Paul many Schaefer. years, Paul Schaefer. Paul, if you're out there, hi. Um, the Schaefer Field has been one of my favorite Cap Francs for years, and unfortunately this year it got severely frosted, and mm. we'll talk about that um, a little bit later in, yeah. in this um, live I, tasting. I, I was enjoying this uh, virtual tasting until Emily mentioned frost. Frost. <laughs> the frost damage that we had recently. 2020 uh, has been has a doozy. Been epic. Yes. Has been absolutely epic. Yep. But let's get to the wine. Yes, I'd love um, that. Because I, I'd love to share this, and... Um, um, the aroma is, I, I would say, it's, it's an intense aroma. There's a sort of a, what, what strikes me first is a sort of like a floral, sweet um, uh, aroma, and uh, I'm getting a lot of red fruit, mm -hmm. a lot of strawberry, raspberry, red currant. Mm -hmm. And then beneath raspberry. that, raspberry, and I'm getting sort of a sweet spice, mm -hmm. and some degree of Actually, uh, I'm probably being a bit imaginative now, but I, I'm sort of getting tea. I'm getting uh, Earl Grey uh, Which tea. is one of my, so one of my favorite aromas and might be how all this landed together. So the base of Earl Grey tea, which I get a lot in this, is, is bergamot, um, which is a very um, aromatic um, spice. Yeah. It's a spice. Um, but it, it does have some sweetness, some spiciness, and some floralness all wrapped into one. 
Um, but for those of you that don't know bergamot, if you like Earl Grey or Lady Grey tea, there's yeah. a lot of this aspect in the aromatics. Um, and you know, every time I taste this wine, it's a little bit different, but I am certainly getting a lot of raspberries on the nose right yeah. now. Yeah, I, I used to teach the WSET courses, and I would use this wine as, as you know, a absolutely straightforward example of what Cabernet Franc is. Mm -hmm. It's just pure, 100% Cabernet Franc. And this would, for me, would be the standard by which I would judge any Cabernet Franc. Mm -hmm. um, Emily, what do you d taste when you taste? So in the taste, what's amazing to me is the barrel complement in this wine, as we said, and I, I, can't, I hate to keep harping on about the barrels, but it's an important part of the process is the aging. Um, but 60% new oak, and for those of you that don't know what, what's new oak, so if I say 60% of it is new oak, that means that 60% of the barrels that are in, that stored this wine, were, they were being used for the very first time. From France. From, yep, all French oak, mm -hmm. and all my favorite coopers, very delicate coopers. Um, and so what that means is, <laughs> not to go back to the tea story, but uh, just like a tea bag, the first time you use a tea bag, you get beautiful compliments, beautiful aromas. If you go to use that tea bag again, the next time, you still get that tea, but it's a little bit more dilute. And that's what happens with barrels. Every year that you use a barrel, the next year, you still get those flavors. But they're not as intense. But a little bit less intensity, and especially on the structure of the wine, the, how it feels in your mouth. The first use of a barrel is is pretty intense on its structure, right. but this wine has completely melded into these barrels. Well, that's your skill in, in being able to do that. And the other thing I think is so important is that many times the, the, the incorrect use of oak mm -hmm. can ruin varietal character. Sure. And I would, the reason I'm harping on about this is that we're getting the varietal character of Cabernet Franc. In Franc, I'm sorry, Cabernet Franc, for all my, <laughs> all my European uh, uh, friends. Uh, and family. <laughs> and family. Yes. Um, and um, let, let's just discuss the, with the flavors. Oh, the flavors, yes, yeah, sorry, yeah. I, I got, I, I digressed on the barrel, yeah, yeah. yes. So on the flavors of this wine, I still am getting a lot of beautiful raspberry compliments. I'm not getting as much Earl Grey or tea on the palate, mm -hmm. but I'm getting, what I love about Cap Franc is this very elegant, from start to finish, there's, there's no overwhelming oak, there's no overwhelming fruit, there's no overwhelming alcohol. Mm -hmm. It's it has very, a very ele elegance. It has a lot of elegance from start to finish. So it's, it's not a full bodied red. Um, I think, did we do Petit Verdot last week or was it the week before? can't remember. Yeah. We've done so many. <laughs> yes. Welcome to virtual tasting number five. Um, <laughs> Petit Verdot is almost the opposite. Of Petit Verdot would be the opposite. In terms of its tannic structure. And Cabernet Sauvignon as well. This is a very soft yet full wine. Um, so I'm getting a lot of spice. Yes. Um, black pepper. Black pepper. Black some pepper, pepper on the finish. Always mm -hmm. you get that little touch of black pepper. And the finish is after you've finished swallowing. So it's kind of like that lingering taste in your mouth. Um, that's what we're really describing when we're talking about the finishes. What what kind of sits behind and you can taste after you've yeah. swallowed. And, yeah. um, that's what I love about this wine is every time I approach it and every time I sip it, I'm appreciating different aspects of the wine. I would say it's got a, a really a wonderfully complex, long finish mm -hmm. that just lingers. It does it, linger. It's, just, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, what else can we say? Well, I guess we probably need to talk about 2007, which was the last year that we had a reserve Cabernet yeah. Franc, and, and start talking about 2020 and all of the challenges of 2020 and yes. the silver lining that exists. Well, in, in 2007, and this will probably make you laugh, we had a freeze cold spell in, on May the 20th. Mm -hmm. And we lost a lot of the fruit, and what was left uh, developed into a beautifully concentrated, small berried uh, 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 wine that, that made the, the Cab Franc, the 100% Cab Franc, uh, in 2007. And I can 
say that if people would come and visit us, for example, we've had Stephen Spurrier come, we've had Oz Clark. I, I go down and pull out my 2007 Cap Franc Reserve mm -hmm. because I say to them, I can show you that we can make really good wine when the conditions are correct. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the, perhaps the silver lining to our frost this year is that we're obviously going to get a, a much smaller crop. But the hope is that with the smaller crop, the quality of the fruit will be higher and therefore we'll be able to make perhaps a 2020 Cabernet Franc Reserve. Yes. And the and first of the next decade. Yes, uh, which would be a lot of fun. And obviously I do try um, every year to try and put together a Cap Franc Reserve. But Mother Nature is in charge and she's certainly been in charge this year. And one of the reasons I think the 2007 did so well, and even the 2017, um, was just that when the vine has less fruit on it, it is much easier for that canopy and all those leaves to ripen those grapes yes. to the best of that yes. vine's ability. Um, and in 07 and 17, um, conditions were perfect. I mean, as far as sunshine, growing degree days, yeah. Um, not too much rain. Um, so fingers crossed for 2020. So we've already reduced our crops, so we're, we're looking at a good vine balance. has done our crop thinning mm -hmm. for us. Um, and I guess the, so far what I've read and, and seen um, for 2020 in predictions, also known as Farmer's Almanac, which ah. you can um, take, you know, for what you take it for. Um, so we're supposed to have a, a relatively hot, dry August, September. So it'll be really interesting to see how all of this culminates because so far it's been a pretty wet, cool, <laughs> yeah. very cool, yes, very frosty, very freezy we, we're, um, spring. We've had much uh, the number of growing degree, degree days is I think about half of it, what it was last year yes. at this time. So we um, we've got a lot to deal with, and but that's the fun of making wine, and that's the challenges that we have to face and. I'm particularly happy that Emily was able to manipulate the very barrel that she wanted to use to make this wine to bring out the varietal characteristics of the Cabernet Franc. To show it off for all, sure. All credit to you, Emily. Oh, thank you, Dad. Cheers. Well, can I ask I you a... That. Cheers. Oh, so sweet. So sorry. Can I ask okay. you, we have a few questions. Okay. And I'm going to butcher this, but... I forgot, I forgot actually to say that at the beginning. I usually okay. say... Okay. Please ask questions. Please ask questions. <laughs> Um, so how would you contrast this uh, Cabernet Franc with one that you would find from the Laurel Valley? Uh, the Loire. That's, Loire right. Valley. That's a great okay. question for Dad. Yeah, well, Loire Valley is the uh, region in France where there's one region, it's called Chinon in Bourgogne, where, they, where the, the red wine is pretty much all Cabernet Franc. Mm -hmm. Franc. Mm -hmm. Particularly Franc if, if you're in the Loire Valley. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and it, the question is good because the tannins from the French, from the Loire Valley, are much harsher. They're much more what I call rustic. Mm -hmm. and, and the Cabernet Franc in, in Virginia is like the smooth version mm -hmm. of, of a French Chinon or a Bourgogne. Uh, the other place they grow uh, Cabernet Franc is in Bordeaux. But of, of the major grapes grown in Bordeaux, Cabernet Franc. Uh, is roughly about 10 to 15 yeah. percent. Uh, Cabernet Sauvignon is about 25 percent and believe it or not Merlot is the most planted red grape in, in Bordeaux. Yeah. So that's a lovely question. Thank you for asking that. Yeah we love that. Um, I have another question which is what would you pair it with? Oh wow uh, pairings with Cap Franc. Um, so one of my favorite pairings with Cap Franc is a roast anything with a roasted red pepper. Um, <laughs> The, there is a, a beautiful compliment, and actually one of the best compliments I've had was from one of my good friends, Mathieu, who's the winemaker over at King Family. And um, he, he always said of my Cab Franc that, that I wasn't afraid of the, the green character of Cab Franc. And that is one of the things that makes Cab Franc Cab Franc. So you have to start off in the early ages of this wine with, with just a little bit of of green character, methoxypyrazines, bell pepper. Yeah. So as this ages and as it softens out, um, it is a wonderful pairing with anything with grilled red peppers, a grilled red pepper soup, um, duck 
breast with some red peppers along the side. Um, For me, lamb. 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 Uh, Cabernet Franc and He's lamb. English, too. I just absolutely, they go so well together. With, with mint, mint sauce. Mint sauce. The mint sauce, oh. uh, you know, it complements it. And, you know, a lot of people think that, that Cabernet, one of the, the sort of the, the, so, the vulnerable parts of Cabernet Franc is that be very bell pepper that you talked about. But that's about. what makes it beautiful. Yeah, but there mustn't be too much of no, it. No, no. And, um, and many people will say that, 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 that the bell pepper aspect, and as you said, the methoxypyrazine mm -hmm. is the chemical that causes that, yep. it is a very big negative. But I would say that we've, we've, we've managed to balance, to, to work that beast out and, yep. and our, our, um, our Cabernet Franc is, is so varietally correct that, um, that I'd be absolutely proud of it. And I think also, with, as far as the lamb reference, the mint sauce, yeah. I think that's gorgeous with a Cabernet Franc. Um, Cabernet Franc doesn't really have a eucalyptus character, but it has some of that sort of menthol mm -hmm. um, freshness mm -hmm. to it that just goes so well. And also, you know, as far as lamb goes, that the fattiness of the lamb and the great acid of the Cab Franc and the soft fruit is just yeah. perfect. The other, the other thing I like actually is also to I use I, I would be happy to pair this with salmon, a fatty fish, oh, yeah. you know, a fish that's delicate uh, with caper sauce um, and, and a Cabernet Franc. Because it won't overpower the the beauty of the fish. It's that's right. And so don't believe everybody who tells you that you can't drink a red wine with fish. Yes. So Cabernet Franc with salmon is, is, a, is a wonderful Great. How long would you recommend this age for? Oh, I think this will age very well, especially as it's showing now. 2017, it's been in the bottle two years. No, one year in the bottle. One year in the bottle. 18 months in the barrel. Yes, yeah. 18 months in the barrel, one year in the bottle, showing very strong, very beautifully. So if we're 2020, I'd say at least five years. Um, at five years, I would start checking on it, enjoying it immensely. Um, but typically with a wine that's had this much oak and this much care in the cellar, at least 10 years, so yeah. 20, 30, uh, 20, 27. Yes. 2027. I think one of the things I look for in a wine to try and uh, assess ageability is the, the balance of acid and, and tannin. Mm -hmm. And the acid is very, very balanced. The tannins are very soft. I really think this wine will age 10 years. Um, I sent a bottle to my medical colleague, Shapur Mombasa, today, and I hope he's watching because uh, this is the wine that I wanted to show him is an example of what we can do at Veritas. Fantastic. Actually, a perfect segue is why would you call this a reserve Cab Franc? Okay, so um, we do a single, we do a Cabernet Franc, so we also have a Cabernet Franc label. The reason this is reserve Cab Franc is because every year I actually do try um, to pick, put together a single varietal Cab Franc which stands on its own and shows um, all of our terroir of the Veritas vineyards. So the only way I know to, to designate it as is a higher end version of, of Cabernet Franc, a single varietal, and um, all you winemakers out there know what I'm talking about, but making a wine out of one single grape and not blending in other aspects of other grapes is challenging in, as far as putting together the whole picture of a wine, making sure you have the fruit, the mid palate, the finish, the structure. Mm -hmm. um, usually you use different aspects of different grapes to build that together. Right. So um, it's a Cabernet Franc Reserve because it's an outstanding example of one vintage, one grape. Now, I'd like to make just one other quick comment that, that many people feel that a single varietal wine cannot have complexity. Um, and you know there was a comparison of French wines with, with California wines back in 1976, the judgment of Paris. And when it came to blind tastings, the, the French judges actually chose the single, single varietal variety. wine over their own very complex chateau wines. So when uh, it happens in the vineyard on its own, there is, I mean, it is a special treat. It is an anomaly um, <laughs> and it's something to stop and, and note. And it's not something you can make every year and that's
that's what I'd really like to point out about this Cabernet Franc. I know we keep saying the last time we made it was 2007, but it was. It's, it's for real. Yep. So guys, this is the this is the the prequel. Yes. So you, having uh, whetted your appetite, um, look forward to the release of our Cabernet Franc Reserve 2017. And it's still available through what Thursday next week, Becca. Sure, now that you said so. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, we'll extend it's, it to Thursday. Yeah. It's going to be Monday, but now it'll oh, be Thursday. Okay. <laughs> it's available through the weekend for sure. No problem. Um, well, on our uh, pre-release. And also, just out of curiosity, somebody was asking if the Cab Francs are typically blended, or are they, if, are they not reserved if they're blended? Is that how you usually make them? Historically, Cab Franc has been a part of a blend. Yes. When you look back at the last yes. 50, 100 years of Cab Franc history, it's always been part of a blend. Uh, my dad and I love it so much that when we are able to highlight it and say this, this is what Cap Franc is. For those of you that that understand Cap Seu yes. and understand Pinot Noir, you don't often get a chance to understand Cap Franc as a standalone, and this is what it is. I think it's lovely. I like that, Emily. Yeah. At the standalone, standalone. That, that's really a, a very good descriptor of, of the wine. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that the last question and probably our good closing would be. What are the hours that we are open and then the format for our visiting? Oh, oh can I that's answer a, that one? Do you know that? No. Oh, no, neither. <laughs> <You're t> <laughs> that's, that's my, okay, so the question was, what are the hours uh -huh. that we're open and what was the second part, Becca? And then the format for visiting. Format for visiting. So let's start with the format for visiting. We are open, um, we have a reservation policy, so you can go online. It's the very first pop-up and you can book your own private space. Um, for just about an hour and 45 minutes. It includes a picnic table, um, a tent for shade, and a really good amount of space so you could bring your family, um, your family up to group, 10 people, up, up to, to 10, 10 people. people. Um, and you also have a server, so it's full service, which is just a luxury um, in, any, in any environment. Um, and of course that is sanitized between guests and everybody's wearing masks and we ask that you wear a mask until you get into your reservation space or your pod. Um, I believe we're open Okay, so 11 lawn, to 5. The lawn is oh, also open? And the lawn is also open so if if your day, you know, you're just kind of out doing your thing and you decide it's a winery day, I've seen a lot of posts people saying, you know what, I just decided it was time to visit a winery. Uh, we are open to walk-ups. We have some lawn space um, out on the far Plenty side. Bring your chairs, bring your blankets, bring your picnics. Limited um, terrace menu on that. And we do, oh, and I forgot to say, on the um, reservation spaces, we have a terrace menu. So we have sandwiches, salads, um, charcuterie, cheese boards. And if you're on the lawn, we have a limited uh, terrace menu. Um, just subject to availability of product actually we've had some supply chain issues but we're doing our best to, to take care of that and provide as, as much of a food and wine experience as we can seven days a week 12 to 5 seven days a week 12 to 5 our, wow. our, is our, thank you Becca our thank you thank you good so well, yeah. I think it's time to wrap up yep. and I'd like to thank everyone for watching us tonight um, continue to drink Veritas wines continue to be safe and we look forward to talking to you in the very near future. Cheers.